Let's raise the minimum wage to $15. Madam Speaker, Madam Vice President, no president has ever said those words from this podium. No president has ever said those words. And it's about time. Good guys and women on Wall Street, but Wall Street didn't build this country. The middle class built the country. And unions built the middle class. So that's why I'm calling on Congress to pass Protect the Right to Organize Act, the PRO Act, and send it to my desk so we can support the right to unionize. And by the way, while you're thinking about sending things to my desk, <laughs> let's raise the minimum wage to $15. No one, no one working 40 hours a week no one working 40 hours a week should live below the poverty line. We need to ensure greater equity and opportunity for women. And while we're doing this, let's get the Paycheck Fairness Act to my desk as well. Equal pay. They spent much too long. And if you wonder whether it's too long, look behind me. I will not impose any tax increase on people making less than $400,000. But it's time for corporate America. And the wealthiest 1% of Americans have just begun to pay their fair share. Just their fair share. I'm not looking to punish anybody. But I will not add a tax burden, additional tax burden, to the middle class in this country. They're already paying enough. I believe what I propose is fair. The pandemic has only made things worse. 20 million Americans lost their job in the pandemic, working in middle-class Americans. At the same time, roughly 650 billionaires in America saw their net worth increase by more than $1 trillion in the same exact period. I also hope Congress will get to my desk the Equality Act to protect LGBTQ Americans. For all transgender Americans watching at home, especially young people, you're so brave. I want you to know your president has your back. Another thing, let's authorize the Violence Against Women Act, which has been law for 27 years. For more than 30 years, politicians have talked about immigration reform, and we've done nothing about it. It's time to fix it. On day one of my presidency, I kept my commitment to send a comprehensive immigration bill to the United States Congress. If you believe we need to secure the border, pass it because it has it a lot of money for high-tech border security. If you believe in a pathway to citizenship, pass it. There's over 11 million undocumented folks, the vast majority of here, overstaying visas. Pass it. We have to also have to get at the root problem of why people are fleeing, particularly to, to our southern border from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. The violence, the corruption, the gangs, the political instability, hunger, hurricanes, earthquakes, natural disasters. When I was vice president, the president asked me to focus on providing help needed to address the root causes of migration and to help keep people in their own countries instead of being forced to leave. The plan was working, but the last administration decided it was not worth it. I'm restoring the program and asked Vice President Harris to lead our diplomatic effort to take care of this. I have absolute confidence to get the job done. Now look. If you don't like my plan, let's at least pass what we all agree on. Congress needs to pass legislation this year to finally secure protection for dreamers. The young people have only known America as their home. And permanent protection for immigrants who are here on temporary protective status who came from countries beset by man-made and natural-made violence and disaster. As 
well as a pathway to citizenship for farm workers who put food on our tables. Look, immigrants have done so much for America during this pandemic and throughout our history. The country supports immigration. We should act. Let's argue over it. Let's debate it. But let's act right here in America. Nearly three times for the same drug, nearly three times what other countries pay. We have to change that, and we can. Let's do what we talked about for all the years I was down here in this, in this body, in Congress. Let's give Medicare the power to save hundreds of billions of dollars by negotiating lower drug prescription prices. By the way, it won't just it won't just tell people on Medicare. A lower prescription drug costs for everyone. And the money we save, which is billions of dollars, can go to strengthen the Affordable Care Act and expand Medicare coverage benefits without costing taxpayers an additional penny. It's within our power to do it. Let's do it now. We've talked about it long enough, Democrats and Republicans. Let's get it done this year. This is all about a simple premise. Health care should be a right, not a privilege in America.